Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of BSD Synergy. I'm your host, Mason Egger, and this week's episode is the setup for our OpenBSD router. So the first thing you may have noticed is not in my usual settings. I'm actually filming this uh, while I'm on vacation uh, from the Windstar Resort in Oklahoma. Uh, hopefully, starting with this episode, I'm going to be getting back to the typical once a week schedule. Things have finally started to calm down at work. And also, I'm going to be doing shorter videos, probably splitting up topics into more videos, um, for many reasons. It means that you don't have to watch a 30 minute video on, you know, these topics. It is easier to write for me and it's easier for me to test when I don't have to do an entire, uh, tutorial in one video whenever I can split it up into these sections. Also makes it easier for those of you that only want to see like this section to only watch this one video. Um, it also makes getting back to a weekly schedule much easier since I don't have to prepare quite so much. So this week, what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be setting up the OpenBSD box that's going to be our router. We're going, I'm going to go through the installation process with you, which I know I've already done one, but you know there may be some things we want to answer differently now that we're doing a router. Also, uh, we're going to be doing the partitions. That's probably the biggest thing is that I'm going to go over how you know, the basics of OpenBSD partitioning, and that's actually significantly different for a router. You know, you don't need a full 10 gigabyte system you could have one but i'm going to show you and i can well from what i've done in the past you can get away with systems that are unbelievably small i used to run a router uh in my home environment that ran on 64 megs of ram and had a 2 gig hard drive and i ran that for years and never had any problems so that being said let's just go ahead and jump on into the demo okay so we're going to go ahead and install so it's going to be your typical install. Uh, this is actually OpenBSD 6.0, so that's really exciting. Host name, we're just going to call it uh, OpenBSD Router. Uh, which available interface am I planning on doing? So I have EM0, EM1, and VLAN0. EM0 will be the interface that is connected to the internet, and EM1 will be the internal interface for the network. That's where everybody will connect to. Uh, we're going to do EM0. You're going to go ahead. You usually would set this up with static uh, because, or you, you don't really have to. You could set this up as a DHCP if you're getting your address from an ISP or something. Um, whenever I ran this, I had static IPs, so I would just set this up to the static IP of one of my addresses. Either or, whatever really works for you. For this uh, demo, we're going to do EM0. Netmask, uh, yeah, that works. IPv6, none. Uh, haven't really no desire. I don't have IPv6 on this machine, so or it's not enabled. Uh, which network interface do you wish to configure? I'm done. So the DNS domain name will just, my domain works fine. This is where you put your own domain. Uh, the name servers that I'm going to put will be the Google one. We'll do BSD Synergy, BSD Synergy. Would I like to start SSHD? So this is a good question. And this is one that you have to decide for your network how you want to do it. So I used to enable SSH on my router. Remember that this is going to be, this is your router, this is your firewall. This is going to be the, 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 the defense between you and the outside internet. So having SSH open on your machine does pose a security risk. You do have SSH open on a, on a public facing IP address that the entire world can access. Now you can handle this, you know, one of what two ways you can have really, really long passwords. Like I sometimes do, uh, you could do key auth. You, you, it will be vulnerable, you know, open SSH and open BSD. It's a very secure system, but you still have that open. One of the good things about having that open, though, is that if you are running your own DNS server on the inside, or even if not, and you have like you know static IPs set up inside your internal network, having SSH open allows you to tunnel into anything. That's actually how I used to access the, like I have I had a Windows box, a Windows server, and that's how I would access RDP from outside my network, because I was actually tunnel in through my router and port forward the RDP uh, port 3389 from Windows back to like a local port, and then I would RDP in straight through the tunnel. Um, if you don't know about tunnels, look back at one of my previous OpenSSH videos. I definitely covered it. So you could do that. You know, maybe you want to be able to SSH in. Maybe it's going to be a console. I'm currently showing you how to set these up as a VM. Um, so I'll always have console access. But if you're actually doing this on physical hardware, which is not something I'm going to cover now, but if I can figure out a way, maybe I'll cover doing OpenBSD router on actual physical hardware. If you're not going to have console access, then you kind of need SSH or serial access or something. You need some way of accessing the console if you ever need to, you know, fix something or you want to change anything. What you could do, again, if you want to know a lot about SSH, watch my previous videos, is enable it and then 
uh, have it only listen on the internal network. That would be an option. You know, only, the SSH daemon would only listen internally. It wouldn't listen on the outside. So you could still SSH into your router from inside of your network. There's a lot of different options here. Um, you pick the one that works best for you. For me, on this demo, I'm going to say yes. I actually probably don't even plan on SSHing into it because I'm just going to use the console, but why not? Do I expect to run the X-Window system? No. Don't run, we're, this is going to be a bare-bones, stripped-down, almost nothing open BSD system. You don't want to be taking up any other things. Setting up a user, I'm going to say no. It's a, it's a, it's a router. Like, it doesn't need it. But that, that does, again, you're bringing up the point. Well, if I have SSH open and I only have root, now I have root access. We are right. And that is bad. Uh, if I would, then I would suggest doing it externally, doing a public private key or, you know, setting up your own user. The way that I'm going to set up the partitions is going to make this a little bit tough, but you could do it. So we're not going to set up a user. Um, allow root SSH. See, it even already knows. I'm going to say yes. Um, I would definitely make sure that, you know, the password that I said at BSD Synergy is not an appropriate password. If I was actually doing something where I had to have external facing root SSH, and that's because I'm being silly and I'm not, you know, I'm not solving the problem correctly. The password would be at least 64 characters long. It makes brute force an absolute pain in the ass. And then you can set up stuff like fail to ban on SSH and all sorts of things. We can totally going to get into that into some of my other videos. Um, available disks, WD0 works for me. Uh, there's no MBR or GPT, so we're going to use the whole disk. I'm pretty much expecting that. This is where things get kind of funny. So, as you can see here, we have five disk partitions. We have the root disk partition, we have the swap, we have an unused space, C, uh, we have D, and we have E. What we're going to do is we're actually going to create a custom layout. Because you really don't need, you know, again, we are going to be doing weird stuff. We really don't need home. We're not going to have users, so we don't need slash home. So, again, this is for you if you want to cut it down to the bare minimum. You can have an OpenBSD router that's a full OpenBSD system, but for something that's doing so little and doesn't require much, it's kind of silly to have it that large. Um, so we hit the question mark, and I have to remember how to do these. So, okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to just delete all the partitions, which is what the Z is. So hitting Z and Enter will delete all partitions, and if you hit P to print the partitions, you have C. C is basically your unused system. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add a partition. We're going to add partition A. This will be our root partition. So the offset is 64. Now here's the, the thing you have to ask yourself. The si This is the size of the partition, and this is again a decision you have to make. How much RAM are you going to give this machine? I, on this VM, gave it 256 megabytes, which is a pretty good amount of megabytes of RAM. For a router, you believe it or not, routers don't take very much. Now, you can have a lot more, depending on what kind of traffic. Is this good for an enterprise system? Hell no. Is this good for M Mason watching Netflix in his apartment? Probably. It, it did for years. I had a server network at home that was running on a 10.1 line. It had 64 megs of RAM. Worked just fine all the time. But if you set your root partition to the entire size, you have no room for anything else, which means you have no room for swap space. And you can make that decision. It's up to you. If you have no swap space and you run out of RAM, you're going to drop packets. You're going to drop packets like crazy and they're going to be gone. So I typically do a half and half. I do an A partition and a B partition. And I have A, B, A, the A partition will have is root, and it's half the size, then I have the other half of the disk being the B partition, which is the swap partition, and then I have, you know, basically, I think I gave this disk two gigabytes, so I'll have a one gigabyte swap. swap. I, you know, watching Netflix at home, not really expecting to lose any uh, data packets there. If you're doing this on an enterprise system, definitely probably want to give it some more. So we're going to have to do some math. I'm going to pull out my phone, because I'm just not going to do that in my head. 4193216 divided by 2. It's two zero nine six two zero nine six six zero eight. Follow the file system type is four point two BSD, which is what we want for our root partition. Uh, the mount point we're gonna we're gonna put it as mount slash, and then we're good. And if I print the partitions again, I have A. And now let's add another partition. And now we have B. B is what we want because it's our swap. That's its offset. That'll be its full size. It already knows B is typically your BSD swap partition, so there we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we're good. And those are the partitions that I want. I didn't need slash user. I'm not planning on installing anything. You'd be surprised. Everything you need for an open BSD router, DHCP, DNS, firewall, routing, you got it. It's all there. It's all there on the base system. Um, 
So I don't need slash user. I don't need slash home. I don't I don't include plan on making users. Now I don't know off the top of my head if by not specifying these partitions does it go in the root partition. I'm gonna guess and say it does, but I'm not 100% positive on that. If you know, let me know in the comments below. Um, so that's what we're gonna do, and I'm this is gonna be the the partitioning of my disk. And if I want to save and quit, what is it? That Q, quit and save changes. Write new label. Yes. Okay, and there we go. We have it. Now we do go ahead and do the CD sets. Uh, that's our typical CD set. Uh, what do we not need? We don't need a uh, game. So minus uh, game 60.tar.gz and then minus x asterisk. I don't need any x at all for what I'm doing here. Now oh, I must have spelled game wrong. Minus game asterisk. Okay, man pages, definitely want to keep those. The comp, the base, got all that BSD, BSD.rd, we're good. This is this is a bare bones installation of BSD. I guess if you really were worried about space, if you're super worried about space, take off the man pages. It doesn't take off much, but you know, you don't have it. But just know that you get stuck, you don't have the internet because your router's down, and you know, you have to go to your phone to read man pages because you're not gonna have man pages on your base system. I typically leave them on there. I'd rather I'd rather lose that little bit of space and have them and not need them than need them and not have them. Okay, so this doesn't contain a SHA-56. Do we want to continue? Yes. Um, and now it's going to go ahead and install BSD. Open installing open BSD. Okay, we hit done. Time appears to be wrong. We're setting it. And there we go. There we go. And we have internet access. We have DNS. We're good. So that's that'll be the base setup. This will be the VM next week that we use to configure our DHCP, DNS, and PF, and maybe whatever other kooky things I think of. Um, I've had enough requests to do a lot of things with this router, so I don't think I'm gonna get them all done in one video. Remember, I'm trying to go to shorter videos, so maybe next week will be beginner, and then maybe I'll have an advanced router where we configure, you know, fail to bend over the SSH port and maybe some snort and stuff. I've actually never used any of that stuff, so it'll be interesting for me to try to learn that too. But yeah, now we've got the base system. So I hope you liked the video this week. I hope that you'll come in next week and you'll be ready to actually set up your OpenBSD router. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and leave me a like. If you want to come back and see me again, please subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Also, I'm going to leave a survey link in the comments about some th questions that I have about you know your perception of the channel, where you would like it to go, things of that nature. So it's a, it's a Google survey. Uh, so feel free to please fill it out. I'll leave the link active for probably a week before I disable it. I don't want to be, you know, getting these surveys. Maybe I'll leave it for a month. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how long I leave it. I'll make sure that I announce on the channel when I'm going to shut down the, uh, the survey. So that being said, thank you very much for tuning in, and I hope to see you next week for the OpenBSD router.